I think let me start from the last question. People deny the prosecutor evidence when they appear before the court. Yeah? They are saying, is that what? Yes. Defendant, you mean? Yes. Defendant, when they, appear, when they appear before the court, they deny the prosecutor's evidence. Yeah? They deny the prosecutor's evidence. The prosecutor's evidence. Yeah, the prosecutor's evidence. Yeah. You know, uh, yes. the article I read, the, the, defense, the defense is uh, not allowed to have access to the prosecutor's uh, evidence before the trial, which, which in some cases, uh, I, I mean, uh, is kind of uh, uh, not giving the defense the right information to defend him or herself. I think uh, we need to understand our legal system. Our legal system is continental legal system. It is not a common law system. We have a British system. As I said earlier, we haven't been convinced <coughs> yet. So we have our own legal system. When the defendant appears before a court, he has the right either to admit or to deny the claim, regardless of the prosecutor's evidence. The prosecutor may have tons of evidence. OK? Regardless of that, if the defendant believes that, that I'm innocent, he can plead that I'm not guilty. Then the burden of proof rests on the prosecutor. The prosecutor is required to produce adequate evidence to establish guilt. Then if the court finds him guilty, the court may pass guilty verdict against the defendant. So it, it's not depend it, it's not depend on the prosecutor's evidence, okay? We have no this uh, pre, pre, pre bargain system, okay? We have no such system, it is common law concept. So the prosecutor, even though, I mean, if the defendant, even though actually he has committed the crime in the presence of many eyewitnesses, so he can, when he appeared before the court, he has the right to, the, to, 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 to deny the allegation. So the burden of proof rests on the prosecutor to produce, I think, uh, beyond the reasonable doubt, it is internationally accepted principle, yeah? Yes. Be it in common law or in, in, in a continental system, the prosecutor is required to prove his allegation beyond any shadow of doubt. Whenever there is doubt, the benefit of doubt always goes to the defendant. So that's why the, the defendant may say that I must give him when he appears before the court. With regard to sharing our law, uh, in our context, the sharing our law will be applicable in family matters, okay, in family case which means uh, when the wedding spouses, when they decide to separate, divorce, when they appear before the law, if they are Muslims, if they determine that our case must be treated in accordance with Sharia law, then Sharia law will be applicable. Will be applicable. Uh, the vast majority of Ethiopia, uh, I mean, two-thirds of the population is Christian, one-third is Muslim, yeah? And if the married spouses decide Besides, okay, that our case must be treated in accordance with Sharia law, then their case will be treated in accordance with Sharia law. Then there will not be an imposition that the case will be treated in accordance with this, this uh, written law, okay? Uh, I don't know whether I'm my properly advancing your question or not. Okay, question. Uh, <laughs> We've got time for one more question, I think. Gentleman over there in the white shirt. Do you consider that? technological developments such as allowing people to Twitter and court or airing court and TV uh, or even stupid poor justice going on television documentaries <laughs> is useful, <laughs> useful to the extent that it uh, demystifies the profession. Well, I have to <laughs> that. I've been telling everyone who talks to me about my less than stunning performance <laughs> in the documentary uh, that uh, I'm shipping a lot of grief because uh, I, I was uh, filmed preparing breakfast for my wife. Uh, my younger son watched the program with me and he was suitably irreverent about my performance. Uh, but when we got to the stage by arranging the uh, breakfast tray, as I do every morning, uh, he said, aha, I see the old obsessive compulsive disorder kicking in again. Um, 
we were we were strongly recommended to uh, participate <coughs> in the program, and by and large, we've had a fairly <coughs> positive feedback to it. It is very important, I think, that we show that we are ordinary human beings, that we uh, follow the same occasions, we, we do the same things as the vast uh, bulk of the population. And it's very important that, that we participate in, in events like this so that you can see that we are uh, as near to the ordinary human beings as you can be after the life of the law. Uh, but uh, uh, technology is an interesting question. There have been rulings, as you will know, recently by the Lord Chief Justice, Lord Judge, about the use of uh, Twitter and uh, the use of Blackberries and so on in, in, in the courtroom. <coughs> I think that uh, one has to recognize that these are now a feature of everyday life. Uh, and uh, to issue an edict forbidding <coughs> them uh, entirely, I think, would be uh, a, a very difficult. I happen to be in charge from my sins of uh, IT in the Supreme Court, uh, and I'm very enthusiastic about its uh, proper exploitation. So that now when I sit in the Supreme Court, as I had done when I was Chief Justice in Northern Ireland, I don't bring in great wraths of uh, authorities or, or, or even great uh, uh, folders uh, of the work. It's all on the computer. Uh, I'm embarked upon what has proved so far to be a pretty forlorn campaign to persuade my colleagues uh, that they should join me in this uh, enterprise. But I have no doubt that that will come. Uh, and of course, it will be a challenge, not only to the justices, but also to the advocates who appear before us. We did conduct uh, one case uh, entirely through uh, technology. Uh, and all of the papers, all of the authorities, were on the screen before the, the judges, uh, and the advocates had to refer to uh, the uh, page number on what I describe as the electronic file. Uh, and I think those uh, of the justices who sat in that case found it very helpful, but we have a long way to go. Well, I think with that brings us to, at the end of the <coughs> formal part of the evening, three thank yous. First of all, Thank you to all of our very eminent speakers. We've been very privileged this evening to hear from all three of them. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, thank you to all of you for your really interesting contributions and questions. And third and last but not least, thank you to Jennifer for organizing today.